Hello, I'm Sherry Truther with Red Apple Auctions, and this is such a fascinating study that I'm going to share with you. I am convinced that we all need to be spraying Windex through our ballrooms before we start the live auction. I think you'll feel the same way when I get done sharing this with you. So I'm tentatively calling this Lemons at Your Charity Auction Make the Heart Grow Fonder, um, and it's based on a 2009 study. So this study that was conducted by Katie Liljenquest of Brigham Young University, I'm sure I'm butchering these names, Chen Bozong of the University of Toronto and Adam Galinsky of Northwestern University published their findings called The Smell of Virtue, Clean Sense, Promote Reciprocity and Charity. Interestingly enough, Adam Galinsky of Northwestern participated in a 2006 study that looked at auctions and found that the lower the starting bid, the higher the sale price. And I'm going to do a video on that research as well, which if it isn't already on YouTube, it will be soon. So keep an eye out for that. But so in this, the smell of virtue study, they asked their participants to engage in several tasks. Some of them went into a Windexed room. Others went into a room that was unscented. They found that there was in much more charitable behavior in the rooms where the participants had a scent. The, the smell of Windex, even though after the study, the participants said they hadn't even noticed that there was a smell in the room. So clearly, smell is a factor in charitable giving. Let me give you a little bit of what they did and how dramatic the results were. So in the first experiment, the participants were less likely to exploit the trust of their partners. Without going into details, all of the participants were given $12. They either went into a room that was scented with Windex or unscented. In the room that was scented with Windex, they were more likely to give $5.33 of that back. In the unscented room, they would only give back $2.81. Big difference. In the second experiment, they had to look at whether or not a participant would be interested in volunteering their time to Habitat for Humanity or donating money to Habitat for Humanity. On a seven point scale, uh, seven meaning I would love to volunteer, one meaning I would never volunteer, if the room was sprayed with Windex, it was, came up 4.21 of the participants being interested. If it wasn't sprayed, 3.29 less. As far as asking would you be willing to donate money to Habitat for Humanity, 22% of those in the Windex room said absolutely I'd like to donate money. Um, Six percent in the non-Windexed room. 22% versus 6%. Big difference there. So you can do the research on this and, and find the, the report. It's a pretty short report. Again, it's called The Smell of Virtue, Clean Sense, Promote Reciprocity and Charity. But what I did beyond that is I went in and started to research a little bit more about what's called scent marketing. Uh, there's a fascinating uh, report by the Marketplace Morning Report. It talked about using scent in a retail environment. Exxon on the run added a coffee scent to their brewing kiosks. It increased sales 55% for their coffee. In another Marketplace News Report, a Las Vegas, it was talking about Las Vegas resorts and hotels and how they spray scent into the casinos to get different behaviors out of people. Uh, for instance, one of the things they said is that right now, Teakwood smell was very bad, but they were experimenting with a coconut and a lemon ginger blend. There's that lemon again that we smell in Windex. And then there was, oh yeah, gamblers spent 45% more money at a casino when surrounded by a pleasant smell. 45%. And then there was an article as well online that you can find. This was great, had a lot of good information. Ad Weeks called, it was called Something in the Air on Adweek, adweek.com, I think is where it is. It talks about how Coco Chanel launched Chanel number no. five. It talks about all these companies, British Airways, Samsung, Weston, Bloomingdale's, Hugo Boss, Ritz Carlton, Jimmy Choo, how they all use scent in their retail environments to evoke a memory and get sales to boost. Um, it might be honeydew, <laughs> it might be a different type of scent, but it's really an interesting. And, and the, the conclusion is that scent is the sole remaining sense that can directly influence how a customer regards a brand. So how can we use this in our charity auction galas, right? Well, here's some ideas here if we want to get lemon into our, into our gala. Centerpieces, right? We can use lemons in the arrangement, but we could even perhaps dab essential lemon oil into the centerpiece. I'm not an aromatherapist. I'm not an expert in that. But um, I don't know. Maybe there's a way to incorporate those reed diffuser sticks into a centerpiece. A florist would be able to help you with that. 
speaking of reed diffusers, maybe you put some in the silent auction. Uh, or if you really want to try ambient scenting at, a, at the um, top end, you can go talk about renting an air diffuser and diffuse lemon scent in that way. You might want to serve lemon food, right? Lemon cheesecake, lemon bars, anything lemon incorporated could be incorporated into your charity gala menu. Maybe your gift bags could include something that is lemon scented. Maybe those roll-on kind of perfume oil spray, spray, spray roll-on roll on, um, scents. Uh, maybe it could be a room fragrance. Uh, the key thing, though, with a gift bag is that you've got to get the gift bag into the guest's hands before they leave. This is, we need to get the scent into them before we ask for money. So you would need to make sure that the gift bags are on the table and that people are looking in them before the auction starts, not giving them the gift bag as they walk out the door. That's too late. The fact is, is that when you start poking around the internet, you're going to find that the research for using smell in a retail environment is overwhelming. And it holds true in charitable situations as well from that research study. So I would love to see what kind of results we would see if we incorporate this into our charity auction galas because it just seems like a no-brainer to me. Now, for other great information on benefit auctions, head on over to my website. That's redappleauctions.com where you're going to get great information on all sorts of things uh, related to raising money in your auction gala. I'm Sherry. Thanks for watching. Good luck to you in your charity auction.